So you know, teachers teach students lots of different things. How to solve quadratic equations, how to write a complete sentence, how to critically think, share, get along with other people, how to critique paintings, how to play an instrument. But have you ever stopped and thought, is there something special about how you teach teachers? Is there something special that we do to prepare those individuals who teach everybody else? If you've answered yes to this question, then you're right. Teaching is a specialized profession and it requires special tools and approaches and technologies in order to do it well. Have you ever heard of John Dewey? He was an educational philosopher and reformer and his work is very, very influential in the work that schools do today. He wrote this large paper called My Pedagogic Creed and in it he lays out point by point his beliefs about the role of school, the purpose of teachers, the nature of curriculum, the nature of how teachers work with students. Well, taking that as an example, Webster University School of Education has developed its own pedagogic creed, but I promise it's not as long as Dewey's. It's centered on three central principles. The first principle is that we teach teachers by teaching. That means our pedagogy and our practice are interwoven together. We can't just teach about what good teaching looks like and what good teaching is. We have to do it. So I can't teach you about differentiation. I have to actually do differentiation in my class, in the activities that you engage with, in the assignments that you might do, in the materials that you interact with. I can't just teach you about co-teaching. We actually have to do co-teaching. We have to have professors co-teach together and model those different co-teaching models for our students as they engage with us. The second principle is that we teach teachers in community with each other. Teaching is not an isolated individual act. You don't learn how to teach alone. You learn to teach in community with other classmates, with other professors, with other practicing teachers out in the field. A tool that we use to foster this community is the tool of lesson study. This means having our students workshop and reteach a lesson or an instructional experience that they design over and over again in different ways. At the end of each iteration of the lesson implementation, the students in collective groups with each other look at the lesson and ask critical questions about it. Why did you make that choice? What would happen if you did it in this way? What would happen if you taught it using this kind of strategy? And then they do it again. By doing that, they develop a flexibility in lesson planning and implementation, and they've learned to do this because they've systematically examined it over and over again in the company of their critical friends. The final and most important principle is that we teach teachers to change the world. I know this sounds idealistic and pie in the sky, but teachers are idealistic by nature and we do want you to change the world. We do this by putting your feet in innovative pedagogical practices, innovative field experiences, innovative guest speakers that come to your class. We want you to see what can be. We want you to think about what would happen if I took a piece of this, a part of this, and adjusted it a little bit and implemented it in my own practice. And of course, underlying all of this is your anchor in your philosophy of education. This is more than an academic exercise. It's your anchor, it's your touchstone, it's your point of reference from which you make all of the educational decisions that you will in the classroom. So those are our three principles. These really undergird our philosophy of education in terms of how we prepare you. We work tirelessly to ensure that you have the tools to do what you need to do to change the world for the students and the families that you will serve.